In our rapidly changing era, people pursue efficiency and a high quality of life. That's why repetitive work has always been a source of trouble for everyone. This has given way to the birth of the omniscient AI system. It will liberate humans from mundane tasks, giving them more time to pursue more valuable and fulfilling vocations. This omniscient AI system will be used in finance, healthcare, and every other industry out there. It will improve work efficiency and reduce human errors, creating more value for humanity. Humanity can thank the system's sole genius developer, Chung Shin, for this. However, the media is more worried about ethical, privacy, and unemployment concerns, not seeing that AI will create more opportunities for everyone. Chen Shin also strictly adhered to relevant laws and ethical standards to protect user privacy and rights. He coolly bade farewell to the press, telling them to look forward to what he had in store. Before entering the car, he was suddenly shot in the chest, a bullet piercing his heart. Pandemonium descended in the streets. The finest mind of the current generation was assassinated. A shady man walked away from the chaos with a calm professionalism. Chung Shin felt his senses dull as he lay on the cold concrete floor. He had just received the Nobel Prize, and he had so many plans for humanity's future. That must have been why a higher power gave him another shot. He heard a mysterious voice initializing the reconstruction of his body into something called Robert. Maybe it's the voice of the netherworld, but the man of science had a hard time accepting that. Reflecting on his life, he had many regrets. He's been so consumed by his work at every waking hour. So, if there's an afterlife, he would like to do as he pleases. Sensing his wish, the system calculated a life plan suited for it. With his life data import completed, Chung Shin was granted the unique skill called What You See Is What You Get. The next thing you know, the voice of the netherworld was gone. Unbeknownst to the genius, he was transported to the secret forest in the middle of the night. A miserably cold sensation spread across his body. He could feel the temperature, wind, and humidity. He can feel things, so he's not dead yet, and his lower body feels especially cold. Thinking of scenarios similar to what he's experiencing now, Chung Shin panicked and jumped, uprooting himself from the silty ground and crashing headfirst on the soil. Out in the open, he could sense his body's outline, texture, and smell. Ideas and realizations wildly flashed inside his mind. If he was not mistaken, he had been reincarnated as a big freaking white carrot. Yes, you heard that right. Under the night sky, where the moon's gleam served as his spotlight, the carrot sighed. Just a few minutes ago, he was a genius scientist with a boundless vision to push humanity to a new era. Now he has to accept the fact that he has been reincarnated as a big white carrot. He also heard the voice of the netherworld call him Robert before he was thrust into this dark place. Even his new name sounded like something straight from the bottom of the food chain. Then, he heard that voice again. A monotonous and emotionless way of speaking, initializing the system. Once the initialization was done, the system demanded to be named. It looks like effective two-way communication is out of the question for now. The first name that came to his mind was his masterpiece of a project, the omniscient AI system, to honor his unfinished business. Then came the blinding bright light seemingly descending from the heavens above. Looking at it would make anyone's eyes hurt. With the system set up as an omniscient AI system, Robert will be provided with all-knowing and all-powerful services. Seeing that wall of text made his eyes gleam with all kinds of possibilities. To make it easier, he gave the system another nickname, Xiao Quan. The first thing he asked from the all-knowing database was what exactly he was. Is he a plant or an animal? What about gender? Xiao Quan beeped and responded that he belonged to the lowest level demon clan in this world, a carrot spirit. Usually, carrot spirits have the lowest demon power. They are genderless and not often preyed upon by stronger creatures. So, he should be relatively safe, at the very least. The next thing he asked Xiao Quan was whether he had any tasks lined up. Generally, in web novels, the system would often assign tasks to the transmigrator. But Xiao Quan didn't give him any grand missions. It just told him to enjoy his second chance in life. So, he was not some kind of overpowered MC. Robert is destined for a casual carrot life, but the genius in him still wanted to plan his career properly. His planning and deep thinking were interrupted by another unfamiliar burst of light that almost blasted him away. He must have crashed against something solid, and it hurt like hell, but his curiosity as to what this solid dome of light was much more intriguing. Focusing his eyes inside the light dome, he caught a glimpse of something otherworldly. There was a woman inside the dome, she was seemingly floating in the air as the light danced around her motionless body. Robert was speechless at the sight of such ethereal beauty. She had long and flowing white hair. The features of her face were nothing short of angelic, and the mysterious rings of runes surrounding her accentuated the mystery. But more than anything, she looked like a human. The woman must have heard Robert bugging out at the sight of the first human he saw and softly opened her eyes, curious as to what that sound was. Just as Robert was thrilled to see a human, the lady was just as delighted to hear the voice of one too. 
She had fully woken up and saw that the human she was expecting to see was actually a walking and talking white carrot. They made eye contact. Robert blushed, and the lady felt her heart flutter. The mystery lady had never seen such a big demon vegetable before. She ran to the edge of the light dome and curiously asked him how he got to this place, and if he was the one speaking the human tongue just now. It had been so long since she last saw a living creature that she did not know how to act right. At this moment, Robert still does not know that the girl in front of him will actually turn out to be a powerful witch who once destroyed the world. A global scourge, future Robert knew, but present Robert was too busy looking at her genuine curiosity and charm, making his heart thump fast and his eyes glued. The lady kept on telling him that he looked so big and so cute, and she wanted to have him even though she could not fathom just how such a big carrot spirit managed to enter the secret forest. Realizing that he might have a unique opportunity in this situation, Robert fixed himself as much as a carrot could. He struck a pose, said hello, and asked if his size was considered large in this world. Robert's scientist brain kicked in as he tried to make sense of how a sleeping girl could be floating in the middle of the forest. Furthermore, he felt a sudden and chilling sensation of oppression the moment she opened her eyes. Meanwhile, she wholeheartedly explained that normally, carrot spirits are very small. They have no nutritional value, and even if swallowed, they don't provide spiritual energy. Robert just can't connect the oppressive feeling to this sincere girl. After her lengthy lecture about how useless carrot demons are, she went back to ask just why he was so big. No matter how you look at her, she's just an ignorant and inexperienced young girl with an inquisitive mind. However, Robert's careful nature made him think twice about how to handle this situation. Just what kind of innocent lady would be sealed inside a powerful barrier? The closer he got to the barrier in question, the ominous feeling grew. She might be some devious spirit deceiving a pure-hearted carrot. Still, he was confident that no one could easily manipulate the most renowned scientific mind in the world. So, the grand plan was to act all innocent and cuddly, harmlessly asking who the girl was and the reason she was trapped in the barrier. But the lady responded in a similar vein. She acted like a klutz, failing to remember the answers to his questions. She even took it a step further and cried that she couldn't remember anything at all. The only thing she could recall was her name, Bai Rui. Then came the pleading to be let out. Since she woke up, it's unclear just how many years have passed since she was imprisoned in this place. Every day, all she did was sleep or stare into the empty space. Robert was inherently cautious, and he swore to himself that he would never easily fall for this act. As the girl banged on the barrier dome, acting cute and begging for his help, he saw a phantom of the past. The image of a witch bathed in blood and darkness that brought about destruction everywhere she went with tears in her eyes. The one thing the innocent girl has in common with the witch is their desire to never be imprisoned alone in a lonely place anymore. As long as she can get out, she's willing to do anything. All this creepy stuff that Robert was perceiving messed with his head quite harshly. After regaining his bearings, he got curious as to what exactly that bizarre scene was just now. The lady worriedly asked him if he was okay. She continued that, as expected for a carrot spirit. Just getting close to this place is the limit. She assured him that she'd be fine, and he didn't have to force himself to help. However, Robert is the type of guy who has the itch to figure out an explanation for everything that he sees, and he is confident that what happened earlier was not an illusion by chance. So, he asked Xiao Quan the system if the all-knowing and all-powerful companion could break the barrier seal. Robert chucked this risky business to the exploration of unsolved mysteries that every half-decent scientist should venture into. Xiao Quan instructed him to make contact with the surface of the barrier. His what-you-see-is-what-you-get skill was promptly activated. After a decoding process, Xiao Quan warned him that the barrier could not be fully destroyed due to the limit of his current spiritual power pool. However, the omniscient AI system can create a substitute for an alternative solution. He curiously asked Xiao Quan to elaborate on this substitution thing. It stated that without destroying the barrier itself, a substitute can be created to replace the girl trapped inside the prison. However, the duration of the substation is also limited by the user's spiritual power. In addition, the girl will automatically be registered as his retainer. She would be able to retain a high degree of autonomy and free will, but cannot disobey the master's orders. This is what being a retainer meant. To Robert, that sounds right up his egotistical alley. Having absolute control over someone else really suits his preferences. While he was chatting with the system prompt, the lady was still waiting for his response. Robert the Carrot finally decided to release the lady now, but warned her that she would have to become his retainer to do so. He prepared a whole speech to convince her to agree, but the lady was already willing to do whatever it took to get out. She does not want to talk it over, and she does not need an extensive explanation of what being a retainer means. And that was because she already knew what being a retainer entails. She knew that if she was to take Robert's helping hand to get out, he would be her master, and she was 100% down with that. 
Hearing her say those words and look like an irresistible angel almost turned the carrot into a bumbling fool. To spur him even further, the lady put on a sultry voice and slowly asked him what he wanted to do with her as soon as she got out of the barrier. Sliding her hand down to her chest, she seductively proclaimed that she was open to everything that he wanted. That's the kind of retainer she will be. Robert, who died from a gunshot wound in his previous life, almost died of blood loss from a nosebleed due to his forbidden thoughts in this second life. Based on Xiao Quan's calculations, they could scrounge up a one-hour substitution per day. When asked if Rober wanted the substation to materialize now, he asked for a timeout, as he was still feeling lightheaded because of his dirty thoughts. Thankfully, the little piece of rationality he still had kicked in, and he laid down a few conditions before they entered this venture. The lady was open to listening to his demands. First, because of her severe amnesia, she will have to obey his every command from now on. Otherwise, the agreement will be null and void. Second, she can only leave the barrier for one hour each day. When his spiritual capacity increases in the future, this one hour can be extended. And last but not least, those strangely seductive and flirty movements and expressions just now cannot be seen by anyone else. Robert wants those for himself. She smiled and readily agreed to his terms and conditions. Busting out her flirty gestures once again, she swore that these things would be for him and him only. Our boy could not even handle a little bit of the heat. How could he even handle the whole flame? With the conditions settled, Robert initiated the process. Even if what he releases turns out to be a deceitful and mischievous presence, he just can't resist the adorable girl in front of him. The omniscient AI system quickly started generating the substitute out of thin air. Once done, a bizarre-looking substitution puppet synthesis has been successfully brought into the physical world. Using the puppet as a proxy into the inside of the barrier, the substitution process followed. A bright light illuminated the surroundings and eventually wrapped around the puppet's body. The next thing you know, the lady from the barrier was already out in the grassy ground of the secret forest for the first time in God knows how long. After the substitution process concluded, the midnight silence returned. She looked behind and saw the barrier from the outside for the first time in forever. She really did come out. Her only wish has been granted, thanks to this weird big white carrot who came from out of nowhere. Unfortunately, the substitution and the clever escape plan took more toll on his frail vegetable body than expected, with his spiritual power depleted and his whole frame deflated. Byroy panicked. She just got out, and it looked like her master was already on the brink of death. She dubbed him Dagen and swiftly ran to his side picked his flaccid body up, and stuck him in between her chest. Robert would have loved to be in this position had he been feeling a little better, but being lodged between her breasts is just making him feel even weaker. Sucked dry of spirit power, the soft sensation made him drain his blood from a severe nosebleed too. Byroy was terrified. She just got her ticket out of this place, and the said ticket was already accepting the coming of a second death due to a fragile fate. Unbeknownst to the two, something has been set into motion tonight. Looking into the distance, towards the dense forest, Prominent figures of the world sensed that the spiritual pressure that had always existed in the middle of the secret forest had disappeared. Byray rushed towards her dog again, who looked like he had just seen a lifelong carousel on the brink of death. He was getting more and more wilted by the second, but Robert felt like he could still salvage the situation somehow. He asked for help to support him back up, and the lady let him lean on her to stay upright. She put his shriveled body against her silky smooth lap and asked if it would make him feel better. It did not help his condition at all. Fortunately, he had no blood left to spurt from his nose. Regaining some of his wits, Robert asked Xiao Quan how he could possibly restore himself to being a fresh white carrot. It turned out that the simplest method to regain his health was to plant himself in the soil. Such a simple solution sounded like a joke to him. He asked the system if it was not just tricking him, as this answer did not seem to be rooted in any scientific basis. Xiao Quan elaborated that the soil in the secret forest contains rich spiritual energy and water. Once planted on it, he can use the absorbability to quickly gain energy, sort of like a charger. Bayre was confused as to who her master was talking to, as he seemed a bit delirious. She thought that this weird master of hers had an imaginary friend or something. Thinking about it from a scientific standpoint, the absorbability can be understood as utilizing a plant's root system to absorb and convert the spiritual energy and moisture in the soil into its own energy. It is a process similar to photosynthesis in regular plants, it's just that when it comes to vegetable demons, the method involves spiritual energy. Robert had to admit that Xiao Quan is quite good at talking nonstop nonsense, so it's hard to argue. Bai Rui's first task as his official retainer was to help plant her master in the soil. Losing strength in his legs, Robert tripped and fell into her massive front pillows again. It certainly softened the fall, but it was also suffocating. She asked if being planted on the soil would be enough for him to regain his spiritual power, and he seemed to think that it was the only solution. But Bai Roy revealed that she can also transfer spiritual power directly to him. 
The amount of power she had accumulated is bordering infinity. Even if she could keep using it continuously, her reservoir might not be depleted for a hundred years straight. Robert was pleased to hear of a reliable alternative method aside from burying himself like a lowly plant. Byray was pumped to give it a try and provide some aid to her new master. Robert also trusted her to do right by him as she was the only one he could count on. Much to his surprise, the angelic lady proceeded to pucker up her luscious lips, closing her eyes and moving her head closer to him. Robert blushed and tried to get out of her grasp, but he did not expect the transfer process to be so direct and salacious. When he failed to shake away from her tight grasp, Robert tried to appeal that it was not appropriate for them to kiss so casually like this. Byroy must have not heard his pleas, or maybe she just didn't care. The mysterious lady with infinite power commenced with the transfer of spiritual power through the power of a kiss. Right as her lips touched him, Robert felt a surge of energy like he had never felt before, a feeling so euphoric and different that it made him jump into the air. He could physically feel the transformation taking place in his body. His carrot hair felt more illustrious. His beautiful legs could run around the secret forest without feeling fatigued. And even his perky buttocks could reflect the bright moonlit sky. Right now he feels like the most vibrant carrot in the world, even though, from an outside perspective, he still looks like a shriveled up vegetable. After a while, the reality set in that he's just expired produce that no one wants to pick at the market. Behind him, he could faintly hear the system prompt mockingly snicker at his plight. When he tried to confront Xiao Quan, the system returned to that same monotonous voice telling him that it was just an emotionless system. Byroy did not know what to say or do. Her boss truly seemed like he had an imaginary friend. He's truly a magical root. Turning to his retainer, he could feel that the main thing he was lacking right now was water. That imaginary friend of his still thinks that being planted in the soil would solve this glaring problem. Hearing that, Bairui smiled and assured her boss that she would dig the pit for him to bury into. With one of her fingers, the witch coalesced a densely packed and compressed ball of power. She pointed it towards the nearby land, and the ball of power hurtled with unstoppable momentum. Hitting the ground, the ball immediately caused destruction. That little compressed ball of power eventually made a mushroom cloud explosion akin to a nuclear weapon test in the middle of the quiet secret forest. For the first time, Robert saw the tiniest extent of how powerful his retainer really was. As the thick smoke billowed through the woods and its inhabitants scattered in panic, a certain location on the outskirts of the secret forest picked up the massive event. A cat boy hurriedly entered a tent with a report to his young master inside regarding the loud sound that came from the secret forest. The demonic beasts inhabiting the woods are fleeing in all directions. The young master sitting on the throne was intrigued. Not long ago, he was one of the few who sensed the disappearance of the spiritual pressure in the secret forest. This disturbance could be connected to that prior event, which means that a new storm is about to rise. The beastman's young master raised his hand to action his subordinate to notify the entire clan of what was happening. They must prepare for departure, as the new era is calling. He wants to lead everyone to expand the territory and proactively embrace this new age. They must avoid being left behind at all costs. Back in the restricted area of the secret forest, the explosion had died down, but Robert was still traumatized and weakened. Credit where credit is due, Bairui's quick digging explosion was highly effective. She made a hole so big that she could not even see Robert at the bottom of it. Meanwhile, the genius stuck in the body of a white carrot was amping himself up to bury himself in the dirt. If the process takes any longer, it would be very bad for him. He was cursing his retainer's ridiculous strength, which dug a hole so deep and massive that he was having a hard time burying it. If he tried releasing her from their contract, he'd be practically digging another hole for himself to die in. Removing all the unnecessary thoughts in his head, he continued shoveling dirt with his legs, focusing on the task at hand. After getting sufficiently deep, he lodged himself between the soil and dirt, waiting for the recovery to happen. He looked like something else from certain angles. Since he's already buried, he called by Rui to come down to the hole and wait for him. Little Miss Loyal Retainer gladly jumped into the gigantic sinkhole that she made, trying to reach her master's side. It had been a while since he got his bottom half in the dirt, but he still felt as miserable and powerless as ever. Meanwhile, Byroy sat beside him, curiously watching and asking if the method was working yet. Not feeling comfortable with her being so close, he told Byroy to step back a little bit and not interfere with his skill. She complied, and he inhaled clearing his mind of dirty and unnecessary thoughts. As soon as he exhaled, something inside him activated at the same time as his body regained its healthy color and sheen. Under the layer of soil, a magical process was just kick-started. He can finally see the purpose of the carrot's leg hair. He could feel the sensation of energy moving directly from the earth and into his frame. Robert was surprised to find out that he had this strange skill to absorb the energy of the earth deeply engraved in his mind. The motions of using it felt incredibly familiar already. Thanks to that, he regained 100% of his energy to break Bai Rui out of her prison back. 
he was reborn and restored as a stronger carrot. Bai Rei looked at her Dagen with wide-eyed wonder and amazement. She could see that her master just grew bigger. Robert regained his confidence, puffing his chest out, and tried to come out of the soil by himself. After a few tries, he accepted that he was too weak to pull himself out of the hole. He had to ask Bai Rui for help, but the lady gladly positioned her hands on his head and assured him that she was super skilled when it came to pulling out stuff that was big, long, and hard. She tried her hardest to pull him out as quickly as possible, holding her breath and skin flushing with a deep shade of red. Finally, Robert has been pulled out. He looks like he just had the best release of his life with how great it felt. Then he was reminded that he used to be the foremost leader in the world of science. And now he's quite literally stuck in this ridiculous situation as a big white carrot. It was a success. And now when our hero was full of strength, it was time to move out. Bai Rei asked Cheng Xin what their plan of action was. He replied that his spiritual power was currently limited by its capacity. And if he wouldn't be careful, he might turn into a wilted carrot again. So, for this case, he had created a plan B. Enjoying Bai Rui's softness, he explained to her that it was a so-called backup plan. From what he saw, Cheng Xin came to the conclusion that in this world, there most likely existed supernatural beings that were also known as demons. The energy source of such beings was most likely spiritual energy. Without even asking Bai Rui about it, our hero was certain that there were cultivators, various factions, and other magical beings present in this world. That was what carried the danger. At the moment, his spiritual energy was only enough to keep Bai Rui outside the barrier for one hour. And if he turned into a wilted carrot, he probably wouldn't be able to deal with the danger on his own in this state. The chance of him dying was almost 100%. Hearing this, Bai Rui smilingly assured that he had nothing to worry about since he could borrow spiritual power from her. However, Cheng Xin had no intention of going this way. It might not be a bad thing for him now, but it could play a cruel joke on him in the long run. He couldn't rely on her strength all the time. In his previous life, his death had been premature, but in this life, he was determined to act cautiously to continue his research in this world. After careful reflection and analysis, Cheng Xin eventually came to the conclusion that for him, the right and proper life path was scientific cultivation. When Bai Rui asked him what it was, he proudly replied that the essence of this path was an efficient and healthy lifestyle. It was a road to gradually achieve the four stages of modernization, to then take big steps towards the fifth era of modernization. The combination of human cognitive abilities with artificial intelligence was the hallmark of the fifth industrial revolution. In this era, humans and robots will coexist, helping each other. The industrialization of the fifth era would provide a huge leap in human development. So far, this was just a fantasy, for Cheng Xin was no different from an ordinary carrot. To achieve this, he had a long way to go. Fortunately, our hero already had a plan. To reduce the risks caused by the loss of spiritual energy, Cheng Xin intended to focus on scientific cultivation as well as improving his living conditions. The first step was to find a safe place to live, and then gradually improve and modernize it. With so much information, Bai Rui's brain began smoking. From her appearance, it was clear that she didn't understand much of what Cheng Xin had said. However, it didn't matter to her. Realizing that Cheng Xin was very smart, Bai Rui completely trusted him and said that she would do whatever he ordered. At the same time, our hero asked the system if it had a trading system. The system replied that it did not have such functionality. However, it added that it could create any object that was in his imagination if he had the necessary materials. All he had to do was touch the materials with his root part. In a note, the system strongly advised against absorbing living organisms as materials. It's prohibited in the cultivation world. After reading this information, Cheng Xin assumed that absorbing living organisms meant joining the path of demonic cultivation. It was forbidden in this world. Because of this prohibition, our hero's rebellious nature began to kick in, and now he was even more eager to break it. This alarmed the system and caused it to issue a serious warning. It said that becoming a demonic cultivator was punishable adding that if it caught up with him in his current state, he would instantly perish. At the bottom, it was written in small letters that if he became a master, things might be different. Unfortunately for Cheng Xin, he couldn't read what was written at the bottom, so he started demanding the system to show it to him again. In the end, he was unable to get anything out of the stubborn system. Turning to the confused Bai Rui, Cheng Xin told her to ignore his strange behavior. Right now, they needed to continue following their plan before her active time ran out. He decided to start by building a small wooden house, and for that, he asked Bai Rui to cut down some trees. The girl agreed without a second thought, because in her opinion, it was the easiest thing to do. However, as soon as Cheng Xin saw the magic in her hand, he immediately panicked and shouted for her to wait. He needed wood to build a house, not ashes. Remembering the magic she had done last time, he asked her not to use such powerful abilities again. Bai Rui replied in confusion that she had used the weakest ability last time. 
Chung Sin didn't know what to say. In the end, he asked her to be cautious and use minimum effort. Following our hero's orders, Bai Rui activated her ability. But this time too, things didn't go according to plan. At the same time, a beautiful girl with bare ears was bathing in one of the lakes located in this forest. She was very comfortable and pleasant, and nothing foreshadowed trouble. But suddenly a few centimeters away from her flew a huge fireball, which scared her very much. The girl stood still for a few seconds, trying to come to her senses. There was too much commotion in the forest that day. But what struck the bear girl even more was the huge attack mark. Looks like she should stop bathing in the evenings. At the same time, Chung Shin was standing near the large attack mark of Bai Rue. His worst guesses were correct, and instead of wood, he only received ashes. Bai Rui apologized, saying that it was an accident. But our hero didn't care anymore. All he wanted now was to get the wood he needed. After a bit of thinking, he could think of nothing better than the traditional method of collecting wood. And that was to use Bai Rui's physical strength alone. The girl was very inspired by the idea and said that he could rely on her. A few moments later, she was standing in front of a large tree. The method of chopping wood with hand chops seemed very slow to her, so she couldn't think of anything better than just pulling out the thousand-year-old tree. Our hero's mind was clearly not ready for such a turn. The huge tree that had been growing in this place for thousands of years was pulled out like a feather. Chung Sin couldn't stop marveling at Bai Rui's strength. With the tree in her hands, she ran up to him and asked if he would be okay with it. He, still in shock, nodded confusedly. And he promised himself that he would use Bai Rui's power more carefully in the future. Since all the conditions were met, the system told Chung Xin to touch the tree trunk. In the next instant, the synthesis of wooden planks for construction began. Although it only took five seconds of real time, by the end of the operation, Chung Xin had turned back into a wilted carrot. But the result was worth it. He was successfully able to synthesize 100 units of wood, which were now stored in his inventory. The system reported that to use them, he just needed to visualize the name of the item in his head. However, Chung Xin was too tired to think about anything. Concerned, Bai Rui placed our hero on her lap and inquired about his well-being. Chung Xin replied with difficulty that he needed to return to the soil as soon as possible to recover his strength. Soon, Chung Xin was back at the bottom of the pit, and he was very happy about it. His spiritual energy was being used up too quickly. He had done very little and was already tired. He couldn't let this continue. He began to think about how to speed up the process of his advancement. However, his thoughts were suddenly interrupted by an unexpected occurrence. Bai Rui's body began to disappear. At first, Chung Xin was startled, but he soon remembered that this was what was supposed to happen. Time was up, and Bai Rui's body began to return back to the barrier. The system also reported that he could now only use the puppet replacement again after 23 hours. Our hero realized that this was inevitable, but he still didn't want to part with Bai Rui. After turning Bai Rui into a blob of energy, the system placed it inside Chung Xin. The system said that it would analyze and obtain information about the creature named Bai Rui. When our hero asked if it was normal, the system assured him it was fine. The system advised him not to worry about anything and to wait for the results of the analysis. His main task now was to absorb water and spiritual energy. The system started deciphering and analyzing all attributes, biological, strength, ecological, and behavioral. But as it turned out later, it wasn't that simple. During the analyzing process, an error suddenly occurred, which the system immediately tried to solve. Despite the complexity, the omniscient system refused to back down and continued analyzing. However, despite its best efforts, the analysis still failed. The system kept trying, but each time it failed. But there was no problem that the system could not solve. It was only a question of time. After calculations, the system reported that it would take approximately 952 hours and 7 minutes to solve the problem. The system asked if Chung Shin wanted it to continue solving the issue. Our hero didn't mind, but seeing the tired look on the system's face, he replied that it could solve the problem when it had free time. Fortunately, even these attempts by the system bore fruit, and the result was that Chung Shin could now use one thousandth of Bai Rui's abilities. To our hero, this was incredible news. At the same time, several spiritual leopards were running through the night forest. They were rushing towards their destination at high speed, and after some time they managed to reach it. As it turned out, their destination was the huge pit that Bai Rui had created, and in which Chung Shin was recovering his strength right now. Seeing the scale of the disaster, the leopards immediately realized that something big had happened. They hadn't encountered such serious issues in a long time. In addition, the barrier in which Bai Rui was sealed had suddenly disappeared. It was obvious that the forest was about to undergo a great change from now on. But for now, this was just their assumptions. In order to confirm their guesses or find some clues, they needed to go down into the pit. Meanwhile in the pit, Chung Shin couldn't be happy with the strength he had gained. He couldn't wait to use his little muscles somewhere. Although he still didn't feel as good as he felt in his human body, but he was already making progress. 
Suddenly, his joy was interrupted by a system that reported that several strong creatures were approaching them. The system's words were true. After a while, our hero heard the sound of approaching footsteps. It was as if he was in a horror movie. Darkness. Someone's approaching footsteps. Growling and the unknown. Chung Shin was scared and didn't know what to do. It was easy to guess that they were wild beasts and they came just when Bai Rui was sleeping. The very next moment, several spiritual leopards appeared out of the darkness. Their gazes searched every corner of the pit as if looking for something. Suddenly, the gazes of all the leopards went straight to the center of the pit. They stared at our hero, who naturally stood out in the middle of the empty cave. But despite Chung Shin's pessimistic assumptions, to the spiritual leopards, he was just an ordinary carrot. To them, his presence there was both surprising and disappointing. They had come here to find some clues, however, they only managed to find a carrot. Chung Shin, on the other hand, continued to shake with fear at this time. He had already guessed that the three strong beings the system was talking about were these spiritual leopards. Suddenly, one of the leopards offered to quench his thirst with a radish or carrot, but the other one immediately dismissed the idea and told him to stop joking. Even if it was a spiritual radish, no one would eat it. Although Chung Shin was a little offended, but this was a good thing for him. It was better than being eaten. In his mind, he thanked fate that he had not been reborn into some spiritual rabbit, because in that case, things could have been completely different. All the while, the system continued to analyze and transform the energy. The progress bar gradually continued to grow, and the moment it reached 100%, a bright light flashed. After a while, Chung Shin's spiritual body appeared from there. His eyes were still closed, and he didn't really understand what was happening. Finally daring to open his eyes, he immediately stared at his translucent body. Seeing his bewilderment, the system explained that it had transformed Bai Rui's power to suit him. And now that the girl was sealed in his body, he could move freely in his soul state. The system also clarified that if he used his power, his soul state could be seen. At the same time, the spiritual leopards had completely lost hope of finding any clues in this pit. They had no choice but to return and report back to their master. And just as they were about to leave, one leopard suddenly wanted to pee. There was nothing to do, so the head leopard told him to hurry up and finish it quickly. At the same time, Chung Shin was enjoying the feeling of freedom and lightness of his new form. However, his joy was destined to be short-lived. The reason for this was this leopard. Thinking himself a hero, he decided to help the poor carrot and fertilize it. But our hero did not like this idea at all. Chung Shin was so angry that his eyes began to blaze with rage. His honor was in danger, and he was going to do his best to prevent this from happening. Even the spiritual leopard felt a bit of our hero's rage. And his friends, too, noticed that it was a little colder around, and they had goosebumps running down their backs. But the impatient leopard did not understand the hint and continued to prepare to do his dirty deed. This was when Chung Shin's patience exploded, and the demonstration of his strength made him visible to the leopards. They immediately growled fearfully, not realizing who had appeared here. Our hero showed up in his human form in front of them, and the power emanating from him made the leopard's fur stood up. Chung Shin simply couldn't understand. How could they allow the thought of peeing on him? They would pay a high price for this. The poor leopard spirits were scared out of their wits after such a fiery appearance of our hero. Chung Shin in his mental form was simply burning with rage. He simply could not tolerate monsters, humans, and other animals and creatures that are so shameless that they mark their territory anywhere. All those who defecate or urinate anywhere, they're all the same. For such, he had no regret, and filled with righteous rage, he used a bit of Bai Rui's power to confiscate the tools used in the crime. A cry of pain resounded over the dark forest, and no more bushes were to be harmed by this leopard spirit's tool. All three leopard spirits rushed with all their might away from this cursed place. But even after they disappeared into the darkness, the whimpering of the leopard spirit devoid of its tool could still be heard for a long time. Chung Shin had to admit that they had run very fast. Their escape was only to the advantage of our hero. He was sure that they would spread rumors about the evil spirit in this forest. And then Chung Shin's five-day plan would go smoothly without any interruptions. After all, our hero is just a weak carrot, and even such a minor use of strength on one leopard resulted in a backache. It made him wonder if in this life and in this world, except as an out-of-body experience, he could only exist in the form of a carrot, from which anyone could only squeeze out all the spiritual power and it would disappear without a trace. Such a prospect of existence was very doubtful. But the system came to the rescue. Xiao Quan explained to our hero that the spiritual power of a carrot was potentially unlimited, and every time he would use his absorption skill, he would increase his spiritual power limit. He should be squeezed dry. The more thoroughly Chung Shin wilts, the more astonishing the breakthrough in values will be. However, such advice was not to our hero's liking and seemed dubious. He saw the words squeeze dry too clearly. Now, after a hard and busy day, Chung Shin was very tired and wanted to sleep properly. 
With that, he asked the omniscient AI system to be on guard all night and wake him up as soon as there would be any danger. Morning came with bright rays of the sun, but it was not them that woke up our hero. It was the morning shower of cold water. Chung Shin immediately woke up thinking it was raining. But it was only by Rui. She came out of her barrier and immediately noticed something interesting. At the bottom of the pit she dug last night, a spring had appeared. This land was truly blessed. Our hero was a little surprised that she herself came out of the barrier. But before he could ask his questions, Bai Rui got right down to business. And decided to help him get out of the ground by grabbing the leaves at the top, completely ignoring the screams of our hero. During the night in the ground, our carrot has become much more healthy and bigger. Now even Bai Rui noticed that he looked smoother and bigger than yesterday. Moreover, he probably tastes better than before. Chung Sin was embarrassed by what she was doing and how she was rubbing him and resisted as best he could. But the strength in this fight was not equal. Not only that, but the omniscient AI system also appeared and explained to him that because his spiritual limit had been increased by one level, he had become more delicious like a carrot. This was where our hero had even more questions. This was definitely not a good thing. You know being a tasty vegetable is bad luck in the forest. Finally, Chung Shin was able to break free from the embrace of our cute witch with amnesia and began to explain to her what she had done wrong. First, the next time she pulls him out, she should just dig him out instead of pulling him. This was all a bit embarrassing and uncomfortable for our hero. The second thing was their plan of action for the day, which was to build the perfect wooden house. With such a place, they would be able to have a shelter and a place for scientific activities. Bayroy was only in favor of building the house. Chung Shin immediately got down to business and opened the inventory, ordering Xiao Quan to prepare the building materials. Bai Rui also supported his imaginary friend as much as she could, but unfortunately, she was doing it in the wrong direction since she simply didn't even see him. In any case, our hero assumed that according to Xiao Quan's functions, he should be able to directly build a wooden house. Unfortunately, Cheng Xin's current spiritual power was insufficient to create large objects. In such a case now, there was a very high possibility of a malfunction in the process. However, he was still able to use his witch. As soon as he asked if she knew what shape the house was supposed to be, she immediately assured him that he had nothing to worry about and ran off to build it. Of course, from the outside, it all looked like a fight, and in the process, the environment was damaged inappropriately. But Cheng Xin, along with his system, cheered her on like the best cheerleaders. Unfortunately, the result was disappointing. For our hero, but not for Bai Rui. Like a real witch, she made herself a house with legs and arms. Although the house was flat for some reason, but that's another matter. Cheng Xin could not understand what kind of postmodern art is this. Our hero had to take control of everything and draw a demonstration of what a normal wooden house looks like on the ground. Bai Rui was supposed to do everything just so and like a real architect Cheng Xin sent her to work, advising her not to become the worst subordinate he had ever managed. But instead of getting to work, Bai Rui froze in place. Our carrot even started asking what was wrong with her and why wasn't she moving. Was his attitude too strict? The real reason was something else entirely. Someone was watching them. That was something our witch was not used to forgive. In the blink of an eye, she disappeared from the clearing and appeared right behind the frightened girl spy who was hiding in the bushes. It was she who was bathing in the lake while Bai Rui was busy chopping down trees. Our witch immediately grabbed the stranger and threatening to end her existence quickly asked who she was. The poor girl was so scared that she didn't even know what to say and Bai Rui started sniffing her. That was enough to realize that the spy girl was a member of the Iron Eating Clan. But another question remained unanswered. Why was she spying on our heroes? The silence dragged on as the girl came to her senses. Finally, she said that she hadn't been watching them at all, but was just picking mushrooms nearby. Of course, Bai Rui did not believe her, but she decided not to act on her own and let the spy's fate be decided by the master. The witch's single spell was enough to move them together from the forest to the clearing. Chung Sin was a little scared at first, but then quickly asked if this was the girl who was spying on them. Bai Rui held her tightly with a murderous look, but our hero only needed one look to realize that the girl didn't seem to be aggressive. How did he know? It was just his gut feeling, just like an instinct. Immediately the system came to the help and explained that because the power of spiritual carrots is too weak, they have developed the ability to sense crises to protect themselves. Even subtle malice can be detected. It was a very useful ability for such weak beings. Meanwhile, Byroy began to lose patience and used force to make the captive speak. The girl repeated that it was not a surveillance and screamed that it hurts. Chung Xin did not want to watch her suffering and first of all ordered Bai Rui to let her go. The witch immediately obeyed her master. Our hero believed that captives should be treated kindly, but she must also tell the truth to keep it that way. If she says it wasn't surveillance, then why was she hiding behind the trees? The frightened girl immediately began to tell that there were always loud noises in this forest and last night it happened again. She had also heard strange rumors from the other tribes, 
That's why she was so curious. She wanted to come and check it out for herself. But of course, she didn't expect to meet anyone here. Chengshin didn't expect those three leopards to spread such nonsense, although he gave them a good scare back then. If these rumors were to be believed, his image in this forest would be quite terrifying. But none of this explained why the young girl had come here to investigate. Bairoi missed the moment of meeting the three leopards and demanded an explanation as to what rumors the girl was talking about. She hesitated and didn't know where to start from. Then the ominous figure of Bai Rui loomed over her and demanded that she answer the question and not overthink it. One look at Bai Rui made even our hero uncomfortable. He didn't understand why the witch had changed so much and became a completely wicked woman. Chengxin even began to worry if he had not completely screwed up and let loose a big and terrible monster. Although if he listened to his inner carrot sense, he didn't feel any aggression or threat from her. She was probably just worried for his safety, and that's why she acted that way. In hope, he took another look at her and immediately realized how wrong he was. She was the devil in the flesh. The poor girl in front of her had a very hard time. Finally, she was able to squeeze out of herself a couple of words that the rumors were that a deity appeared in the forest. Such an answer our hero did not expect, but he had not misheard. It was a deity. In the girl's imagination was something far from the truth, but it seems that she was not the only one who imagined it that way. Her clan and herself wanted to come and see this great deity, to pray to him and ask for his blessings and to keep them safe and joyful. In all of this, our hero had only one question. Which clan members was she talking about? The answer came by itself, as the soil began to crumble from the top of the pit, and a multitude of eared figures appeared. Damn it, a whole tribe of giant pandas had come to visit our hero. Chengxin didn't understand how there could be so many of them here. Bai Roy came to the rescue and explained that this was the iron-eating clan. In her remaining memories, they were ruthless and evil ancient divine beasts. Although they didn't seem that way to our hero now, According to the legends, the iron-eating clan was located on Chiyu's mount. Their feces were as hard as steel because they ate iron without harming their stomachs. The legend said that Chiyu casually scooped a lump of feces from the panda's buttocks and shot them out with it. That was like swoosh and it becomes a peerless, unique, hidden weapon. And this hidden weapon has a hidden property, well, not really hidden, a strong smell. Bai Rui took everything seriously and didn't want any competition. She threateningly told the young girl that there were no deities here but the iron-eating clan representative couldn't accept that. She knew very well that the deity had driven away the leopards from the wind clan. Chengxin had to intervene and try to calm Bai Rui down so that she wouldn't be harsh to the non-aggressive guest. But even he assured the girl that there was no deity here and she should get her clan out of here quickly. She couldn't believe it. There was supposed to be a wilted carrot in a pit in the middle of the forest. The rumors from the wind clan described it all very clearly. Then she froze for a moment, as if mesmerized. It was only now that she realized that the carrot was talking and that she had been talking to the carrot for several minutes. Her next reaction was not at all standard. She squealed with delight and bowed to our hero. Now she was addressing him as a great deity. In the legend passed down in their clan from generation to generation, it was said that one day there will come a spirit carrot that can speak, and he will come riding on colorful clouds to save their clan. And this talking carrot would become their true deity. And now she was 100% sure that our hero was that deity. He's the deity that belongs to their iron-eating clan. All the pandas bowed respectfully, and they didn't care at all about the cries of Cheng Xin, who was trying to explain to them that they were wrong, he was not a deity, and he didn't have any money to give them. Nor did he tell them to bow at all. The panda girl immediately rushed to hug our hero, convinced that the great god had finally arrived to save them. The other pandas decided to follow suit. These cute little lumps all rolled to the bottom of the pit, filling up the entire space. Bai Rui didn't like what was happening at all. Damn it, she couldn't let anyone touch the big carrot besides her. That big carrot belonged only to her, and she wasn't going to share. She was ready to take what was hers by force. But Panda Girl wasn't about to give up either. Each was pulling in their own direction, and no matter which way you look at it, only our hero was a victim. Well, not really a victim. Two beauties were pulling him with all their might. And all because of some damn crazy legend. Chengxin couldn't take it anymore and shouted for them to stop. After his shout, the girls calmed down a bit, but continued to look at each other with angry glances. With just one more shout, our hero finally managed to calm them down. Cheng Xin, like a strict parent, began to scold the girls. And to be honest, there was a lot to scold them for. From a fat carrot, he had turned into a bean pod. In this form, he didn't feel dignified at all. And since there was a definite possibility that he was the defending god of the Iron Eating Clan, Cheng Xin had something to say. However, in the panda girl's opinion, it wasn't just a mere possibility, she was completely certain that it was so. But Cheng Xian didn't share her excitement and ordered her to shut up. In his opinion, her poor fighting skills matched her intelligence. However, he had never seen someone as gullible and obedient as her before. 
Simply put, she and her tribe could be a great free labor force. Bairoi had tremendous destructive power, and she was perfect as a walking cannon. But her work skills were a bit lacking, to put it nicely. The house that Bai Rui had built was uninhabitable, to say the least. On top of that, Cheng Xin was sure that those three leopard fools must have spread false rumors. As a result, there was a high probability that this place would soon become a hot spot. This was not what he wanted to achieve his dream. Besides, the resources here were limited, barely enough to build a small farm. Staying in a hole was equivalent to stunting his development. Comparing all these factors together, Cheng Xin came to the conclusion that the best solution was to accept the panda girl's proposal and become their god. Turning to the girl, he asked her what her name was. The panda girl replied that her name was Wan Lin. Cheng Xin wondered if there was any territory for his people and also how much free labor. Sorry, pandas were in their clan. Wan Lin excitedly replied that they lived on the edge of Secret Forest, the Qingfeng Bamboo Forest, and they had 108 bears. Our hero didn't really like her enthusiasm, but he had no choice. The very next moment, Wan Lin started to hug him. Cheng Xin tried to resist, but it was useless. The panda girl found his roots very cute, so she started stroking them. But Cheng Xin didn't quite like her touching his legs. Suddenly, a chill ran down Wan Lin's back. There was someone behind her with murderous intent. As you might have already guessed, it was Bai Rui. She was furious and was ready to burn the insolent girl. Realizing how this could end, Cheng Xin began to beg Bai Rui to stop. Then Bai Rui suggested an alternative option. Wan Lin was to become her slave and serve her forever. In her opinion, this was the best and fairest way to go about it. But Wan Lin and Cheng Xin didn't think so. The panda girl didn't want to become the slave of this crazy woman at all. Cheng Xin, on the other hand, was thanking fate at that moment for not making him Bai Rui's enemy. He was scared to imagine what would have happened to him if that were the case. Fortunately, he was in charge now and could decide what to do. But first, he chose to once again convince the limits of his authority. Cheng Xin asked Wan Lin if the whole tribe would follow his orders and if he was their only faith. The girl immediately confirmed his words. Cheng Xin was happy to hear this. He now had a ready base camp where everyone would obey his orders. He couldn't wait to experience it. Turning to the others, he said with a serious face that it was time for the god to go home. Wan Lin and the little pandas were delighted to hear this. Without wasting time, they headed straight to Cheng Xin's new residence. Their path took them through the beautiful Qingfeng Bamboo Forest, which was only half an hour's walk from the big pit. It was a great place to rest and relax. Wan Lin's words were not an exaggeration. The forest was truly beautiful and like a paradise. Just by walking through it, he could already feel himself becoming relaxed and comfortable. Just in this forest was a village of pandas. There were their lodges as well as hot springs. Altogether, it created an atmosphere of relaxation and a desire to stay longer. However, Bai Rui thought otherwise. In her opinion, it was sad to see the iron-eating tribe in such a pitiful state. She remembered back to the day when she... That was the end of Bai Rui's words. She suddenly realized that she couldn't remember what had actually happened that day. Cheng Xin was only happy about it and told her not to worry. He didn't want her to remember possible bloody scenes from the past. At the same time, Wan Lin noticed Grandma Yao and immediately called out to her excitedly. She shouted loudly to her that she had managed to find God. Cheng Xin speculated that she might be the head of the village. Even though he was now a god, he still had to respect elders. However, Grandma Yao was not what he had imagined. From her appearance and bright smile, it was hard to tell that she was Wan Lin's grandmother. Furthermore, she seemed as anxious as he was. While he was pondering over this, Wan Lin introduced him as a talking carrot spirit. Cheng Xin had no choice but to awkwardly greet her. Granny Yao froze for a moment, as if trying to realize what was happening. But the very next moment she cried out in shock. Tears of happiness appeared in her eyes. She still couldn't believe that she had met the god they had been waiting for. She immediately shouted to all the villagers that their god had arrived and that they should go out and pay their respects to him. This joyful news quickly spread throughout the village. Like Grandma Yao, the other pandas were also very surprised. Soon, a whole crowd of excited furballs were rushing to the place where Cheng Xin was, eager to see their god. A whole tribe of pandas knelt down in front of our hero and greeted him in the manner befitting a god. Cheng Xin soon realized that the feeling of being praised was not bad. In his opinion, it was even better than receiving the Nobel Prize. This way, the five-day plan was successfully completed. Once the formalities were over, Elder Yao made a sincere request for Cheng Xin's help. Her concern was due to the forest guardian who had disappeared. In the past, strangers didn't dare to come to them and avoided their forest. But with the disappearance of the guardian, everything could change. This place could soon no longer be as safe as before. After hearing this, our hero realized something. The guardian that Grandma Yao was talking about was none other than the unsuspecting Bai Rui. It was strange that the panda tribe didn't recognize her as the guardian, 
but Chengxian put it down to the fact that the pandas were afraid of her strength and never approached her. While he was thinking about this, Bai Rui was playing with the pandas. From one glance, it was clear that she really liked this place. The hot springs and the bamboo forest with fluffy clumps was a great place to relax. Now it made sense that Bai Rui was their guardian. After all, the pandas she wanted to protect weren't too smart either. Chengxian asked Elder Yao to continue her story. Granny Yao said that there was a clan of leopards living in the neighboring forest. According to her, they had always wanted to take over their Qingfeng bamboo forest. In addition, they had recently seen some rangers from their clan wandering nearby. Wanlin also added that the wind leopard clan had always bullied them since long ago. Every time the pandas left their forest, the leopards would hunt them down and bully them. There were even times when they sent all sorts of threats and intimidation to the panda clan. Grandma Yao said that once, thanks to the power of the Iron Eater clan, a third of the Senlua forest's land belonged to them. But as time went on, they kept retreating more and more into the bamboo forest. Now they were cornered. They no longer had anywhere to retreat to. From the surging emotions, Grandmother Yao indignantly said that if not for the disaster that befell them a thousand years ago, they would never have been so humiliated by the Wind Leopard clan. From her reaction and stories, Chengxin concluded that their tribe had been strong and vigorous in the past. There was only one thing left to wonder how it had turned into what it was now. But what worried our hero the most was whether Bai Rui had anything to do with it. Watching her sweet treatment of the pandas, he had already believed that she was really a guardian. But that was only until she started deciding what dish was best to make with the Iron Eaters. Fortunately this time, it was not a big deal. Turning to Bai Rui, Chung Xin whispered and asked if she was confident that she could drive off the leopards if they attacked. After thinking for a while, Bai Rui replied with a sly smile that if he told her to, she would even wipe them out completely. But that wasn't what our hero wanted at all. He said that it would be enough if she could just protect the panda forest. Although Bai Rui was useful, she was still a terrifying woman in our hero's opinion. But as long as he controlled her, everything should be fine. Turning to the pandas, Cheng Xin said that they didn't need to worry anymore. After all, from the moment the gods came to their forest, peace would come, and the sky above their heads would be blue. Of course it all sounded like the usual campaign for the presidency, but still. He also said that as the god of the iron-eating clan, he blesses them all. The pandas were overjoyed. Their dream had finally come true. Grandma Yao and Wan Lin started hugging and crying with happiness. Our hero inevitably got under the hot hand, or rather the breast. Due to the lack of air, he turned so red that he looked more like a tomato than a carrot. However, they couldn't rely on his strength alone. Bamboo Forest Ching Feng had to be armed head to toe. Cheng Xin said that starting tomorrow, they would upgrade the Bamboo Forest's security system by combining mysterious ancient formations with advanced technology. They would have to restore an indestructible shield for their bamboo forest. Soon enough, night fell. With its arrival, uninvited guests once again appeared at the pit. This time, the leader of the Wind Leopard Clan himself arrived. He was determined to see for himself. However, when he saw the pit, he realized that the words of his subordinates were not a lie. Even if that person wasn't a god, he must have possessed tremendous power. Despite the warnings of his subordinates, who were still shaking with fear at the memory of what had happened, the clan leader was determined. He fearlessly rushed into the pit to the now delighted shouts of his subordinates. Inspired by his fearlessness and bravery, they rushed after him. Arriving at the bottom of the pit, the Wind Leopard leader was able to find a spring and a strange wooden house. There were clearly strange things going on in this place. He immediately shouted to his subordinates to send out orders to closely monitor this area. He saw this as an opportunity for his clan. He was sure that if they could capture this god, their clan would have a bright future. At the same time, our hero was relaxing in the hot spring. Compared to his previous stressful life, in which he thought of nothing else but work, this one seemed like a paradise. Even so, he still missed his past life a little. The hot springs were really good for his emotional state. Even Bai Rui was able to relax in them. Just when Cheng Xin thought that it would be good to have a scrubbing master, Wan Lin appeared. As if reading his mind, she volunteered to help him wash. She was immediately met by Bai Rui's stare and unfriendly gaze. But luckily the hot springs were working so well that she chose not to start a conflict this time. Wan Lin decided not to miss such a great opportunity and immediately rushed towards Cheng Xin. Our hero was not yet fully convinced that he was awake. He decided to consider today as a reward for his hard years of labor and boredom. Suddenly Wan Lin stood up. Both Cheng Xin and Bai Rui couldn't believe their eyes. As it turned out, their village provided a lot of healing services. Hearing this, Cheng Xin immediately realized one thing. She was a professional. Late at night, the Qingfeng Bamboo Forest was a serene haven where even the pandas found solace in sleep after indulging in one too many rounds of bamboo beer. Grandma Yao Lin, nestled among the tranquil trees, mumbled in her sleep about still being able to drink anyone under the table. 
Not far from her, Chung Shin gleamed with renewed energy, having just emerged from a professional oil massage that left him shining like a polished gem. The massage had worked wonders, not just on his body, but on his very soul, leaving him more refreshed than a radish in the morning dew. As he wandered through the forest, Chung Shin's curiosity was piqued by strange lightning lanterns casting an eerie glow over the dilapidated houses. Once a thriving settlement, the place now seemed like a ghost town, abandoned and left to decay. The iron-eating tribe, now devoid of strength and reduced to a pitiful existence, could barely manage to shift between their human and bear forms. Watching them struggle to transform made Chung Shin wonder if they were just better off staying as bears. At least then, they had an excuse for being so useless. In a place like this, where a single spark could set the whole forest ablaze or a lurking ancient beast could attack at any moment, these people were clearly surviving purely on luck. Trying to shake off the unsettling thoughts, Chung Shin hoped for a quiet, uneventful night. But of course, as fate would have it, he felt a chill run down his spine just as he began to relax. Turning around, he was startled to find a girl staring at him intently. He had no idea how long she had been watching him, but her gaze was unyielding. Standing at a distance, their eyes locked in a silent standoff, Chung Shin couldn't help but chuckle internally. He was a walking, talking jinx. His misfortune was as predictable as the sunrise. It was Wang Lin, a sneaky spy with an uncanny knack for uncovering secrets. She'd correctly deduced that he was the divine spirit inhabiting the radish kid's body, but as she approached him, her suspicion deepened, wondering if he might actually be the true carrot god spirit. When Cheng Shin asked if she had been watching him all along, his translucent form left her utterly dumbfounded. She could only nod, still trying to process what she was seeing. Deciding that there was no point in hiding the truth, he sighed and introduced himself with his real name, Chang Shin, while explaining that despite being stuck in a radish body, he could still transform into his proper form. Lin's mind spun as she tried to wrap her head around it. Meanwhile, he couldn't help but feel awkward, realizing that it wasn't every day an ordinary human asked for a handshake with a soul. To reassure her, he reiterated that he was indeed the real radish spirit, all while his radish body muttered the exact words he was speaking. After countless reassurances, the truth finally dawned on Lin. The great deity, the radish spirit, had already taken on a human form and divinity. No wonder the iron-eating tribe had such high hopes for a guardian deity to come to their rescue. Her eyes lit up with excitement, and in a burst of enthusiasm, she practically lunged at him, smashing his head into her considerable chesticles. Those man-killers nearly suffocated him on the spot. Struggling to breathe, Chung Shin quickly suggested they take a walk around the forest instead. Feeling the weight of her enthusiasm, he also mentioned that spirits need their space, and this would be some kind of divine test that she would have to take every three days. As they strolled through the forest, he casually asked if there were any other lightning tools besides fire in this world. She explained that only the nobles of the large city-states had the privilege of using them. The glowing lights scattered throughout the forest, she said, were called firefly stones, tiny crystals capable of storing spiritual power and emitting a variety of colorful lights. Each charge of spiritual power could last about half a month. But as she spoke, her voice suddenly faltered, and he noticed the change, immediately sensing something was wrong. In a voice thick with pain, she revealed it wasn't just about the firefly stones. Many facilities running on spiritual power relied on captured or traded spirit slaves as energy sources, including some of her own tribe members. She recalled the gruesome torture they endured, their spirits drained to the last drop before being discarded like broken tools. Bound in heavy chains, they were sold in markets as soulless commodities, mere resources to be used and tossed aside once depleted. Her heart ached as she relived the agony her people suffered, and she couldn't hold back her sobs any longer. He, trying to console her, said that this barbaric era would surely give way to a more civilized future. With a wry smile, he added that it was just her bad luck to be stuck in such a grim time. Sensing her need for a distraction, he guided her toward the sound of water in the distance. When they reached the riverbank, shrouded in darkness, he asked if looting occurred in this world as it did in others. She nodded, and he continued, explaining that spiritual power, as a valuable resource, was bound to attract those willing to fight for it. Wherever there's life, there's a carrier of spiritual energy, and cruelty becomes inevitable with it. The law of the jungle doesn't change, no matter the world. Sitting by the river's edge, he let the cool water flow over his hands. He mused that if new resources with greater sustainability and regenerative properties were discovered, more valuable and abundant than the old ones, it could reduce dependence on traditional sources. Such a breakthrough could spur economic growth, diminish competition, and even lessen conflicts. 
his scientific mind buzzed with the possibility of harnessing the river's flow to generate electricity. He estimated the flow rate to be less than one meter per second and casually asked Xiao Quan about the waterhead's height. It informed him it was 30 meters, a crucial factor in calculating the potential energy. Hearing him mention Xiao Quan, her curiosity peaked. Who on earth was this Xiao Quan? While Xin continued crunching the numbers, he figured that with a water wheel boasting over 70% efficiency, they could generate 21 kilobars of power per second. As he muttered to the air, lost in his calculations, she finally blurted out her confusion. Who was he talking to, and what exactly was he planning? Still, deep in thought, Shin chuckled, admitting that his results were a bit too idealistic, almost dreamlike. However, with Xiao Quan's help, he believed they could achieve something remarkable, even if the situation seemed far-fetched. He finally explained to her this amount of electricity could power households, or even small industries. Trying to simplify it for her, he added that they could potentially create a new energy source to replace spiritual power, one that would be much cheaper and would eventually make the extraction of spirit power from slaves obsolete. However, with a touch of scientific caution, he also noted that this would only happen under perfect conditions and any changes could alter the outcome. After processing all this, Lin concluded that her great deity's plan was to eliminate the need for spirit slaves. Meanwhile, our enthusiastic scientist was relishing the opportunity reincarnation had given him. In this new world, every element, air, water, forest, felt like a second gift from nature, one he was determined not to take for granted. He believed that if used wisely, these natural resources could yield infinite power. That's why he loved science and mysticism, and now he has had a chance to apply them together. Lin, the ever-loyal, if slightly scatterbrained follower, interpreted science and mysticism as the names of two of her deity's friends. Naturally, she assumed they must be just as extraordinary as he was. But while Lin was busy making sense of her deity's mysterious ways, Shin was focused on a much bigger picture, turning this river into the first step toward a new energy era, the dawn of electricity in this world. As dawn broke, the Qingfeng bamboo forest stood tall and resolute, bathed in the soft light of the new day. Here, the villagers gathered, inspired by the saintly carrot spirit who declared in a tone reminiscent of biblical verses, let there be light. The entire village echoed his words as if the very act of speaking them could summon the light they so desperately needed. Subconsciously, their deity had imprinted the significance of light on their minds, a beacon to guide them out of darkness and into a brighter future. As the villagers bowed in reverence, filled with renewed purpose, the carrot spirit couldn't help but think, work for the light, though his inner monologue added a dry, but how are they going to work when they're practically bumping into each other in the dark? Luckily, it was still daytime, so the urgency was real. The carrot spirit swiftly organized the villagers into teams, assigning tasks with a strategic brilliance that belied his playful demeanor. The first team was tasked with extracting magnetic ores, a crucial element for their future endeavors. The second team was sent off to dig for iron, while the third would gather stone, sand, and coal. As the villagers eagerly set to work, their energy infectious, even Granny Yao Lin's eyes gleamed excitedly. She stood poised and ready, awaiting God's orders like a general on the brink of battle. Wang Lin, equally thrilled, was practically bouncing on her toes, eager to lend a hand. Our science-savvy protagonist, always one to find the most efficient way to get things done, took a closer look at their resumes. He noted that Granny Yao Lin was skilled in handicrafts, so her talents would be used once the water wheel and generator were up and running. Then he got to Wang Lin's resume. After a quick skim, he raised an eyebrow and asked with a smirk, So your only specialty is back scrubbing, huh? Congratulations, you're now my official massage therapist. Wang Lin, a spy who had likely infiltrated enemy ranks and survived countless dangers, found herself facing an unexpected job description. But when it came to her deity, she was more than happy to roll up her sleeves and get to work. After all, who could resist the chance to serve the great carrot spirit? especially when it involved giving divine massages. As she prepared for her new role, Bai Rui suddenly appeared behind them, her eyes glinting with mischief. Any tasks for me? She asked, her tone dripping with irony. Maybe exterminating the leopard wind tribe on my way to breakfast? Or how about occupying a small human country while I'm at it? She struck a pose so dramatic it defied description, her enthusiasm more alarming than reassuring. Chang Xin barely managed to keep a straight face. Just sing some songs, Rui he suggested. Though inside his spirit, alarms were ringing. This girl's memory seemed to be creeping back, which was far worse than anything he could imagine. Her usual talk had gone from quirky to downright terrifying, and it was only getting worse by the day. 
But Rui, ever eager to prove her worth, felt a pang of disappointment. She knew she could be more beneficial to Shin, and frankly, she was bored out of her mind. How many squishy pandas could she play with before losing her sanity? Sensing her unease, Shin awkwardly reassured her. How could you be useless? You're the cornerstone of my grand plan, he exclaimed, though his mind raced for a plan that didn't involve her terrorizing every creature within a mile radius. Rui, however, needed to be convinced. She flopped dramatically onto the ground, pouting in a way that clarified her displeasure. Since these new companions had arrived, she felt that Shin had become indifferent to her, and it gnawed at her. In her wistful tone, she expressed how things had been better when it was just the two of them, back when it was her and Shin against the world. A heavy sigh escaped her, laden with jealousy and nostalgia that hinted at her longing for the past. He, trying to persuade her with the patience of a saint, reassured her that she was his chosen one, and they were inseparable. He assigned her a vital task to prove his trust, taking full responsibility for protecting the entire Qingfeng bamboo forest. If any intruder dared to set foot in their territory, she would report it directly to him. But Rui, ever the eager beaver, got excited and declared that reporting was too much of a hassle. She'd just show him the dead body of the intruder instead. This bold statement sent a nervous sweat trickling down Shin's radish-like form. Rui, still bubbling with enthusiasm, added that she'd ensure the forest's safety around the clock with one hour and fifteen minutes of activity time. However, she made it clear that Shin needed to become stronger. Otherwise, she'd be counting down the minutes every day, eager to break free from the barrier just to spend more time with her master. At that moment, Xiao Quen suddenly appeared, offering some practical advice. With consistent practice, he explained, Shin could increase his spiritual power limit. He even mentioned that Shin could learn more about boosting his spiritual power using his system. However, Xiao Quan casually dropped the phrase, drained dry, which didn't sit well with our radish hero, who found it deeply offensive. After all, he was a deity now, not a dried up vegetable. Shin decided it was the perfect time to rest well with everyone busy at work. He nestled comfortably under Rui's smooth lap, finally getting some much needed relaxation. Now, Rui couldn't complain that he wasn't close enough right there on her lap, though she might have been thinking, I appreciate the effort, but should I cuddle you or water you? As he tried to relax, he noticed a sudden commotion. All the pandas had piled up the materials they had gathered, looking utterly exhausted as if they had just conquered the world. But when he saw the pitifully small heap of supplies, his blood pressure skyrocketed. The pandas, puffed up with pride, had clearly put in what they believed was a Herculean effort, but the pile was nowhere near enough to fuel his grand production plans. These fluff balls had worked themselves to the bone, but the results were inadequate. Infuriated, his first thought was to turn these cute, lazy creatures into giant monster pandas. Maybe they'd be worth relying on. But after a brief rage-induced transformation into an angry radish, he quickly calmed himself down. After all, getting sick would do no good. If a deity falls ill, who will replace him? With a deep sigh, he realized it was time to whip these pancake pandas into shape. With a stern face, he announced that starting tomorrow, the entire tribe would be doing morning radio gymnastics. But seeing the panda's lackluster response, he upped the ante. Two extra rounds of military boxing would be added to the regimen. Naturally, the lazy pandas tried to squirm their way out of it, insisting that tomorrow was their day off. But disobeying the radish deity? Not an option. He was determined to turn these fluff balls into something more valuable than cuddly furniture. Desperate for a solution, he turned to Xiao Quan, his last hope, to figure out if there was any way they could use the meager pile of materials to make a water wheel and a generator. To his surprise, it gave him the green light. Energized by this news, he further instructed it to try synthesizing a light bulb using whatever tenses and comics they had lying around. After all, it would save on spiritual power. Xiao Quan got ready to work, but only after warning that creating complex industrial products would consume extraordinary power. Xin, ever the optimist, brushed off the concern and urged him to start immediately. But when the words, spirit consumption, hit his ears, he hastily told Yao Lin to dig a hole for him. He instructed her to plant him in it quickly if he ran out of spirit power. Using his absorption skill, he could recharge and keep the cycle going. Understanding only the dig a hole part, she nodded her head vigorously, ready to follow orders, even if she didn't fully grasp the plan. As he touched the pile of ore, Xiao Quan began wrapping it in a shimmering, transforming aura. This caught Yao Lin off guard, who was busy digging a hole nearby. Seeing this divine display, her faith in her deity deepened even further. Xiao Quan calmly reported that the essential components were taking shape while our radish deity began to feel his energy draining rapidly. 
Panic surged through Yao Lin as she noticed Shin's drooping leaves, but he reassured her to wait a bit longer. With only a sliver of energy left, she promptly planted him into the ground. As expected, he immediately activated his absorption skill, drawing spiritual power from the earth. Meanwhile, Xiao Quen continued to utilize Shin's dwindling spirit energy to complete the transformation process. Finally, after an eternity of draining the poor radish, the basic materials emerged, glistening in the light. Now feeling like a wrung-out dishcloth, Shin looked up to see Xiao Quan preparing to synthesize the final industrial machinery. With a weary yet triumphant smile, he couldn't help but think, who knew farming would be this exhausting? I might as well start charging for radish energy at this rate. A system prompt popped up with a sudden upgrade notification, announcing that the Carrot Spirit's maximum level had increased to level 2. The surprise was enough to jolt Shin back to full consciousness. Groggily, he asked Xiao Quan what it all meant. Xiao Quan congratulated him on leveling up. As the notification settled in, Shin felt a rush of energy. His spiritual power was fully restored, and his capacity increased by one. But with that boost came an unexpected side effect. His carrot body now looked even more appetizing. While Shin was thrilled with the upgrade, he didn't want to become anyone's next snack. So he flatly rejected the congratulatory bouquet from Xiao, who seemed to have an unsettling, edible outlook on him. As Lin scooped Shin into her arms, she was astonished by the sudden burst of vigor in her divine deity. But then, a sweet, tangy fragrance wafted through the air, the unmistakable scent of a pickled carrot. It made Lin adore her deity even more, though Shin couldn't help but feel uneasy about it. As he was about to ponder his fate, Shin asked Xiao Quan to pull up the stats panel. Of course, Lin got agitated again at the unseen entity that Shin kept conversing with. Despite Lin's confusion, the stats panel materialized in front of him, displaying an array of information. As he scanned through the details, his excitement turned to mild panic. His HP and strength were both at a looming level of zero, which didn't bode well for his physical durability. These attributes weren't just medical concerns, they marked his overall combat potential, and that potential was embarrassingly low right now. Sure, his intelligence and spirit were maxed out, but his other characteristics, attack power, stamina, agility, and magic attack, were all bottoming out at zero. Shin did have some intriguing skills, though. The what you see is what you get skill allowed him to generate anything from reality and fantasy. Another skill, sucking, gave him the ability to absorb spiritual power, moisture, and energy while analyzing data simultaneously. But what really threw him for a loop was discovering that his designated weapon was by Rui. The system was still analyzing what that meant, so he had no idea about any special effects his so-called weapon might have. To top it all off, he had a unique ability to move around freely, even while his carrot body was in a deep slumber. He couldn't help but feel that his combat power was absolute trash. However, when he compared himself to the white radish, the embodiment of his spirit form, he realized that his power wasn't so bad after all. At least the beginning wasn't too terrible. All in all, he felt like he was part excited, part snack, and part scientist who accidentally wandered into a game he didn't sign up for. So, he snapped back to reality, determined to continue with his modernization plan. He firmly believed that technology would change his destiny and intended to use it as his primary productive force. After all, relying solely on his radish form for protection was not an option. With a sigh, he decided it was time to get serious. He needed to figure out how to fight, properly. He had noticed an option in the stats panel for combat skills, so he made a mental note to ask Xiao Quan about it later. But for now, his focus was on the task at hand, testing out those complex artifacts that had been produced. Eager to see the fruits of his labor, he set off to try them out by the river. Later that night, everyone gathered at the riverbank under the pale moonlight. The squishy pandas dutifully brought the artifacts, a small water wheel connected to a generator, and the generator in turn attached to a simple lamp. It was a modest setup, but it could potentially revolutionize their world. Xiao Quan, ever the helpful guide, instructed him to toss the water wheel into the river, assuring him that he had adjusted it for an otherworldly foolproof operation. He barely had time to react before one puffball panda enthusiastically threw the artifact into the water. They waited for an eternity as the water wheel began to turn, slowly gathering speed. He stood by the switch, his heart pounding with anticipation. This was it. The moment to showcase a scientific miracle to this primitive world. Everyone held their breath, eyes wide with excitement. Finally, he flipped the switch, and the lamp immediately blazed to life, casting a warm, golden glow across the surroundings. The entire crowd gasped in unison, their expressions a mixture of awe and disbelief. Their divine deity had done it. He had brought light to the darkness without the need for fireflies, stones, or fire. 
they were utterly astonished by this display of divine ingenuity. As the reality of what they witnessed sank in, they fell to their knees, bowing to their deity with newfound reverence. May the divine being enjoy eternal peace and prosperity, they chanted, their voices full of gratitude and joy. Their faces beamed with uncontainable happiness. It was as if their deity had finally blessed them with an unlimited supply of divine Wi-Fi, allowing them to stream enlightenment 24-7 without ever buffering. He, basking in their adoration, was momentarily caught off guard by the loud, Ula, chants that echoed around him. The sheer volume and intensity of their enthusiasm were overwhelming. He tried to calm them down, waving his hands in a gesture of modesty, but he couldn't help feeling a little flattered by their overwhelming praise. The scene turned almost comedic as he found himself juggling between restoring order and enjoying the well-deserved adulation. While the villagers were busy showering Shin with praise, three familiar leopards watched from a distance, their keen eyes narrowing in disbelief. They couldn't believe what they saw, a carrot right there among the tribe. But not just any carrot. It was the same one from that pit. One of the leopards, who had assumed the role of leader among the trio, squinted his eyes with determination. He muttered, confident beyond doubt that he would recognize it anywhere, no matter how much it had changed, becoming a bit more bouncy. Even if it were reduced to ashes, he would still know it. His companions nodded in solemn agreement. They too were astonished and convinced. One of the leopards, wide-eyed and still struggling to comprehend the situation's absurdity, turned to the leader. He asked in disbelief if he had heard those little puffballs referring to it as a divine being. The realization hit them like a ton of bricks. They finally understood how that mysterious pit was formed, that though it was the work of this so-called sacred deity of the tribe. Now buzzing with excitement, the trio realized the importance of their discovery. They immediately reported this to their lord, Leopard Dafung. This was a golden opportunity for their clan, and they couldn't afford to waste a single moment. Without another word, they bolted toward their clan's territory. Back at the Leopard Wind Clan's base, the atmosphere was tense. Men with leopard tails, resembling fearsome ravens, stood guard, their eyes scanning the surroundings with vigilance. The three leopards, now in their human raven forms, transformed as they crossed into their territory. They hurriedly made their way to Leopard Fung's camp, bursting in with what they believed was vital military intelligence. Still catching his breath, the trio leader started to stammer out the news. The leopard explained that they had found the talking carrot they had lost in the pit and, but before he could finish, Leopard Fung's eyes, glowing fiery, bore into him. Fung's sharp clawed hand sliced through the air as he commanded his men to stop being nervous and speak clearly. The leader swallowed hard, then blurted out that the big carrot was likely the divine being they had seen. Leopard Fung's expression darkened, his face tightening with tension. He demanded confirmation from the other two warning them that they'd face severe consequences for deceiving him if their information was false. The other two ravens, feeling the pressure, quickly backed up their leader. One of them, trembling with fear and determination, swore to their lord that they would never dare deceive him. With unwavering certainty, he insisted they had seen it with their own eyes. The puffballs had called that carrot a divine being. The third raven added that the light wasn't from fire or a glowstone. It came from a small glass ball, but it was something entirely different something otherworldly. Leopard Fung's eyes narrowed as he processed the information. This discovery could change everything for the Leopard Wind Clan. When Leopard Fung heard the mention of light, his eyes widened in shock, and an icy chill snaked down his spine. Whispering, the weight of realization crashed over him as he said, He gets it now. The ancient legend of the fluff ball. No, wait. The Iron Eating Clan. A carrot spirit that can speak human words will return the clan to its former glory. May the censor smile at them. Quickly turning to his men, he asked if they remembered this legend. Their faces turned grim, each nodding in silent confirmation. The bizarre twist deepened the intrigue as their eyes met with a shared understanding. Maybe, just maybe, the appearance of this divine carrot could work in their favor. The next day, Changshin was greeted by a sight that nearly knocked him off his feet. The entire Leopard Wind Clan was bowing down in front of him, fervently expressing their deepest desire to accept him as their leader. His brain practically short-circuited from the shock. Just yesterday, these were the same enemies he would have expected to see brandishing claws, not bending knees. Meanwhile, the Qingfeng Bamboo Forest Clan had scattered, retreating into the distance, mumbling anxiously among themselves. How on earth did the Leopard Wind Clan waltz into their territory as if it were nothing? Leopard Feng, eyes filled with reverence, began praising the carrot deity, 
wishing that this god would govern the universe and bestow upon him dual blessings of happiness and longevity higher than the heavens. His men quickly joined in, chanting praises for the carrot deity with such enthusiasm that it was hard to tell whether they were serious or really good at improvising. Feng then turned to Shin, pleading for his command, ready to follow any order he might give. He was left speechless, his mind wholly flabbergasted. The old enemies of the Qingfeng Bamboo Forest Tribe were now groveling at his feet, eager to serve him without any apparent reason. He stood there, surrounded by a cloud of confusion, wondering how he had ended up in this bizarre situation. Neither of the clans, once bitter enemies, could wrap their heads around sitting side by side with the deity Carrot. He found it baffling to see a ferocious, savage tribe like the Leopard Wind and a bunch of puffballs from the Iron-Eating Clan suddenly united in their devotion. The number of followers had now swelled to over 200, adding to the absurdity. Wan Lin, summoning her courage, finally turned to Leopard Fung and asked the question that had been gnawing at her. She wanted to know if the Divine Carrot was their Iron-Eating Clan's guardian deity. And if so, what business did these evil leopards have meddling in their affairs? She couldn't stand the idea of this savage tribe following their deity. With a condescending grin, he pointed at Wan Lin and the puffballs, mocking them for always scrambling to gather scraps. He questioned how they could ever hope to accomplish anything significant. Her face flushed with anger. She snapped back, insisting that as long as they were determined, they would eventually gather all the resources their deity needed. Her determination only prompted a chuckle from him. He scoffed, suggesting that they might manage to gather the resources, though it would likely take a hundred years or more. His words cut through the air like a knife, leaving her blood running cold. The insult stung, and Fung's mocking gaze only fueled the silent drumbeat of fury in her chest. Their squabble was cut short by Cheng Xin, who had quietly observed the exchange. He had noticed something odd. Despite Feng's harsh words, there was no killing intent behind them. This puzzled him. Why had the Leopard Wind Clan bullied the Iron-Eating Clan before? Why had they tried to seize their resources and territory if they weren't malevolent? Meanwhile, the Leopard Wind Clan was eagerly guessing that the Carrot Deity might be willing to accept them. But Wan Lin and her pandas were crestfallen. Seeing the situation was far from settled, Shin turned to Leopard Fung and laid down his terms. If Fung could answer a few questions, Shin might consider allowing them to follow the deity. Leopard Fang quickly agreed, but the first question made him break out in a sweat. Shin asked why the Leopard Wind Clan had previously bullied the Iron-Eating Clan. Fung started mumbling under his breath, glancing nervously at his subordinates, who were suddenly interested in the sky. After an awkward silence, Shin's patience wore thin. He warned Fung that if any law-breaking or deceit was involved, their negotiations would end right there. Fung's nervousness grew as he realized that one wrong word could cost his clan everything. With frustration etched across his face and his claws scraping the ground, Leopard Fung muttered something about the puffballs being too cute in a barely audible voice. Shin, puzzled by the faint whisper, Fung repeated that the reason for their actions was the puffball's irresistible cuteness. This time, Shin listened and reassured him. Realizing he was too old to be agitated by such trivial matters, Fung finally bellowed out that the Iron-Eating Clan was simply too cute for the leopards to resist. The cuteness was just too overwhelming. This outburst was an unexpected twist in an already strange day for Shin. Shin was reeling from a series of shocks that seemed to defy logic. The entire Iron-Eating Clan was equally stunned to hear Leopard Fang's story. Fung described how the little puffballs from their clan would sometimes venture out of the Qingfeng forest, teasing the leopards with their adorable tails and ears. Unable to resist, the leopards found themselves irresistibly drawn to the fluffballs. Their attempts to reach out were met with the puffballs playful antics, leaving the leopards both annoyed and enamored. Shin's mind was spinning from the absurdity of it all. In an effort to regain some control, he brought up the matter of territory. Leopard Fung shrugged, admitting he didn't understand why the puffballs rarely left the forest. They were so elusive that the leopards could hardly ever get close. Their frustration would build up to such a level that it became unbearable prompting them to take over the forest whenever they felt the urge to scratch that itch. Fung cheerfully added that whenever they felt that irresistible urge, they'd go right ahead and do it. The explanation only added to Shin's confusion, but he couldn't help but find the whole situation oddly entertaining. This new development sparked yet another question in Shin's mind. Why didn't these squishy puffballs ever leave the Qingfeng bamboo forest? He sighed, unable to understand their reluctance. He turned to Wan Lin and assured her that while everything the Leopard Wind Clan had said seemed to be accurate, he needed to discuss whether she was comfortable with their company. She bowed deeply, acknowledging their belief in the Divine Being. However, she expressed her frustration, admitting that their efforts were futile. She felt their inability to assist the Divine Being was due to their own laziness over thousands of years, 
resulting in their current ineffectiveness. He encouraged her not to be discouraged, suggesting that everything would turn out fine if they combined their efforts. Her spirits lifted by his words. She felt a sense of relief as Shin turned his attention back to the Leopard Wind Clan. Shin then extended a warm welcome to the Leopard Wind Clan on behalf of the Iron Eating Clan, inviting them to join their more prominent family and applauding their new alliance. As Shin clapped, the entire assembly followed suit, their applause echoing through the clearing. A member of the Leopard Clan spoke up, suggesting that they should come up with a grand name for their new alliance. Shin pondered this idea. A unified name would symbolize their solidarity and create a sense of unity. He asked Xiao Quan to assist with the task, specifying that the name should include elements of iron-eating, leopard, and carrot. It should also be easy to pronounce and, ideally, sound a bit intimidating. With instructions clear, the system began generating names according to his specifications. Meanwhile, Wan Lin and the rest of the Leopard Clan grew increasingly curious about who Xiao Quan was and what role he would play in this new chapter. The system eventually proposed the name Iron Carrot Leopard Gang. It explained that this name was crafted by combining one character from each desired word, meeting all the specified requirements. The iron part was meant to signify strength and power, while Leopard Gang symbolized determination and ferocity. The unique addition of Carrot added an unexpected and distinctive twist, making the name so impactful that just shouting it could make almost anyone instinctively tense up and feel a shiver of fear. Shin, however, was unimpressed. He turned to Xiao Quan and questioned whether such a ridiculous name was the best they could come up with. To him, it felt like turning a severe matter into a joke. Deciding to rely on his judgment rather than the system's suggestions, he devised the more straightforward name, Carrot Alliance. Unfortunately, his system wasn't thrilled with this choice either, and continued to push back against it. Despite the system's objections, the process of naming the new alliance continued. Leopard Fung, however, was unfazed by the debate over the name. With a determined expression, he declared that their commitment to the Carrot Alliance was unwavering. They were prepared to climb mountains of swords and plunge into seas of flames for the sake of this alliance. After successfully forming the new alliance, Shin gave the Leopard Clan a new task, to focus on his plan. The Leopard Clan quickly got to work, amassing a mountain of ores required to produce electric energy. Standing at a distance like a mere spectator on a hill, Shin could only marvel at their impressive effort. Leopard Fung soon approached him, eager to know if the gathering was complete and if there was anything else Shin needed inspected. He, thoroughly satisfied with their progress, gave Fung a thumbs up. The efficiency of the work, now bolstered by the addition of the Leopard Fung clan, was remarkable. They had streamlined their operations, using both animals and vehicles to accelerate the collection of raw materials. With the Leopard Clan's newfound dominance, the Iron Eating Clan now enjoyed a reliable fitness coach. The Leopards had effectively taken on overseeing their efforts, proving to be an excellent support system for their carrot deity. Seated on Bai Rui's lap, everything seemed ready, but Chang Xin was once again facing immense pressure to develop the machine. He was deeply concerned about how he would manage to complete the task. Rui reassured him that when it came to spiritual power, she had it in abundance. She also devised the idea of moisture absorption directly from a river. This was much faster than the slow process of planting in the soil. Xiao Quan added that there this synthesis process for regaining spiritual power would be more efficient than traditional methods, so they were ready to begin. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for the work ahead. He instructed them to start synthesizing magnets, rotors, and other materials needed for the water wheel and generator. However, his spiritual power quickly drained away as soon as he began. Wan Lin and Leopard Fung looked on in shock. Undeterred by the commotion, Rui gently picked Shin up and kissed him. She infused him with her spiritual energy, and then, with a determined grip, repeatedly soaked him to revive his energy. Despite her efforts, it seemed like his carrot soul was slipping away from his body. As Rui continued her work, Shin muttered through gritted teeth, Don't pull my hair next time. Fortunately, her unconventional method worked. He began regaining some of his spiritual energy, though the experience left him disoriented. Rui's quick thinking and spirited approach brought him back from the brink, ensuring the work could continue. At last, the system chimed in with good news. The item synthesis had been successfully completed and were now stored in his inventory. He slowly opened his eyes to see a massive water wheel standing before him, alongside a generator and an exquisitely designed desk lamp. The sight of these new creations left him momentarily stunned. Frustrated, he glared at Xiao Quan grumbling about the excessive use of his spirit power for such artistic endeavors. Despite his annoyance, the magnificent lamp mesmerized the entire Carrot Alliance. It was an actual work of art that left everyone in awe. The time had come to place the water wheel carefully into the river. Rui, displaying effortless strength, 
lifted the enormous machine and set it down precisely in the flowing water. The wheel had been positioned perfectly and was ready to start its work. The excitement was palpable as everyone eagerly anticipated the advanced technological setup from the mighty carrot. With the setup complete, the system prompted them to begin the power generation experiment. Lin pressed the start button, and the giant wheel began to turn, propelling the water with impressive force. The generator sprang to life, converting the motion into energy. A wire connected the generator to the artist lamp, and soon enough the lamp began to glow with a warm, steady light. Overwhelmed with emotion, Shin couldn't hold back his tears. After a long journey filled with challenges and exhaustion, they had finally achieved their goal. Power. The following days brought a wave of progress to the Qingfeng Forest, as every home now enjoyed the benefits of electricity. The transformation was complete, marking a new era of illumination and advancement for the community. With power lines strung up, the village transformed from pitch black to a dazzling light display. Kids eagerly swapped their candlelit reading for the bright, new electric lights, while the elders gathered around a non-existent TV, indulging in some good old-fashioned gossip. Laughter filled the air as the shiny new incandescent bulbs replaced the dim oil lamps, casting a warm glow on faces and dreams alike. The days of battling summer heat and dealing with food spoilage were over. Thanks to the arrival of electricity, washing machines, and fridges had become the latest must-haves. The Qingfeng Bamboo Forest was no longer just a realm of daylight and candles. It had embraced the 21st century, brimming with promise and possibilities. Cheng Xin chronicled this remarkable transformation, sitting back in a chair, content and proud. He titled his work, Science Enter the Countryside, the semi-serious public welfare documentary, capturing the essence of this new chapter. At night, the entire forest glittered with light, a testament to their progress. Rui basked in the joy of electricity, her mood as bright as the new lights. Shin, too, felt a deep sense of satisfaction, reflecting on how all the training and effort had been worthwhile. Xiao Quan informed him that his spiritual power limit had reached level 5, and Bai Rui would be active for three hours daily. Despite this good news, Shin decided to unwind with a relaxing swim, thoroughly enjoying the peaceful moment and hoping for no interruptions. But Shin's relief was short-lived. Out of nowhere, Leopard Fung appeared, ready to offer his services. With his newfound massage expertise, he approached Shin as if he were about to perform ancient magic. Don't worry, he said with a grin. I've been trained by the best. And by best, I mean Wan Lin's secret classes that even I'm not sure I passed. Shin's eyes widened in surprise, and he quickly protested that he didn't need any help. Despite Shin's protests, Leopard Fung was brimming with confidence. With a self-assured grin, he picked Shin up and assured him he'd be very gentle. He set about preparing for the massage but the massage is making him uncomfortable, much like a deep philosophical discussion might. Meanwhile, Rui, seemingly unbothered by the commotion, faintly registered the situation, but didn't seem fully engaged. Just then, Wan Lin joined the scene, usually saving her skills for critical moments. She gently massaged Rui. Undeterred by the odd turn of events, Rui too leaned into the treatment with a resigned smile, equally enjoying the massage. Amidst this, he managed to slip away from Leopard Fung's clutches, both Shin and Feng realized that the true magic of a massage lay in Wan Lin's professional touch. Grateful to be free from Leopard Feng's overly enthusiastic approach, he was more than happy to take charge of things, enjoying the rare moment of solitude and peace. As night fell over the forest, a dragon snake with glowing eyes crept through the shadows, watching the lanterns and scheming quietly. Morning arrived, and with it, a bustling activity at the entrance of the Qingfeng Bamboo Forest. Electric lamps were being set up, transforming the once dim entrance into a glowing gateway. One of Leopard Feng's subordinates, diligently overseeing the setup, glanced around satisfactorily. But as work paused for a break, the combined food procuring team showed up with an impressive spread, ready to banish the clan's hunger. One particularly ravenous fellow, driven by hunger, leapt for the food with the enthusiasm of a kid in a candy store. Unfortunately, his hasty grab caused the latter to snap, sending him crashing down in a spectacularly graceless tumble. His fall might have been comical, but his landing in a heap of overturned baskets and spilled provisions was a sight that would keep everyone laughing for days. As he tumbled to the ground, a strange cloud of mud swirled up from nowhere, and out of it stepped Zhu Ying, who looked like she'd just walked out of a fantasy novel. She was the younger sister of the Spirit Snake tribe's leader, and her sudden appearance made anyone's skin crawl. One of Leopard Fung's subordinates cast a cautious look at Zhu Ying. With a hint of suspicion, he asked who she was and what she was doing there without an invitation. With a casual shrug, Zhu Ying responded that such matters were ancient history. She explained that nowadays, 
every demon tribe in the Grand Forest was abuzz about the strange events in the Secret Whisper Forest. Everyone was eager to seize more territory, and she wondered if they had considered this. She unveiled her venomous dragon snake with a dramatic flare as though revealing a master plan. Zhu Ying then expressed surprise that the Leopard Fung clan had allied with the Iron Eating tribe, calling it a relatively backward move. Zhu Ying dismissed the Iron Eating tribe as a joke in the Grand Forest. Her disdain was palpable as she prepared for a fight. Feng's subordinate, bristling with determination, declared he was ready to face her. Zhu Ying launched herself into the fray without giving anyone a moment to react. Feng's subordinate struck out with a sharp clawed attack, but she effortlessly sidestepped it. Her own snake, a formidable and menacing creature, slithered menacingly, adding to their troubles. Sensing the overwhelming challenge, the pandas were ordered to fall back, leaving them to fend for themselves. Yet Zhu Ying's agility proved unmatched, and every attack they launched was futile. In a fit of sheer rage, Zhu Ying watched as her male opponent struggled fiercely against the thick, coiling blue rope that bound him. His attempts to escape were in vain, as the rope tightened with every frantic movement he made. She leaned in, lightly flicking her tongue against his cheek as if to taunt him. With a swift, decisive flick of her wrist, the rope constricted even tighter, forcing him down onto his knees. The male character's face contorted in pain as the rope squeezed mercilessly. Suddenly, Zhu Ying's focus shifted. She felt a powerful presence approaching at breakneck speed. Turning, she saw a massive leopard with blazing yellow eyes barreling toward her. It was Leopard Fung, transformed into his formidable beast form, his eyes locked on her with an intense, predatory gaze. The tension in the air crackled as the two adversaries prepared for a dramatic clash. Fung let out a ferocious roar as he lunged towards her, his claws slashing through the air with lethal intent. But she reacted with lightning reflexes, leaping clear of the deadly swipe. She barely touched the ground before Fung was on her again, his attack relentless and unyielding. Realizing she couldn't match his sheer power, she swiftly transformed into a dragon snake, her serpentine form allowing her to dart away with incredible speed. Fung watched in astonishment as she vanished into the distance, her speed surpassing his wildest expectations. He knew she couldn't be far. She was indeed hiding nearby. With a fierce growl, Fung bellowed to her sister. Their leopard clan had forged an alliance with the Iron Eating Tribe, and they were now known as the Carrot Alliance. Fung warned her that if she intended to swallow them whole, she should be ready to face their full wrath. His voice echoed through the forest, carrying the challenge to anyone who would listen. The mood grew somber in the dense bamboo forest as the group absorbed Fung's message. One of them remarked that if the Spirit Snake Tribe was targeting them, it likely meant that other demon tribes were also scheming. The sense of urgency was clear. They needed to quickly enhance the strength of their clans. Xiao Quan appeared out of nowhere and informed Xin that he had a solution. His cryptic announcement, as usual, left the rest of the tribe bewildered. Whispers of curiosity and speculation spread among them as they wondered what Xiao Quan's plan might be and who their mysterious deity friend indeed was. The system buzzed with a cold, mechanical voice, relaying the grim news. The master's current spiritual power wasn't enough to enhance the entire tribe. The only options were to upgrade them one by one, or wait. He mulled over this dilemma, realizing he'd need to strengthen himself first. His philosophy was simple. They'd return the favor if others didn't provoke them. But if they did, retaliation was inevitable. Determined to take action, Shin immediately instructed Feng to prepare the entire tribe for battle. He declared that from now on, the Qingfeng Bamboo Forest would no longer be peaceful. The modernization efforts needed to speed up, and reinforcing their defenses was crucial. The tribe responded with enthusiastic cheers, rallying behind their deity's bold and courageous plan. That night, Shin busily sketched out the fortress design, his mind racing with ideas. Meanwhile, with a mischievous glint in his eye, he was already plotting his own twist. He envisioned security plans laced with live electric power to showcase the might of technology over mere spiritual strength. His devious smirk suggested he was about to make a shocking statement.